That name might not necessarily ring a bell, but uh, if you call him Evans, yes, that might just ring a bell. He has been in the news since uh, his arrest last week, and like the octopus, his story has different arms. All right, we'll take a look at recent revelations from alleged kidnapped kingpin Evans as he leads the police to the hideout where he used to keep his victims. And with us in the studio, of course, is a public affairs analyst, Nelson Ekujimi. Many thanks for joining us today on TVC Breakfast. Thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning. Let's talk about events. How would you like to refer to him? Uh, well, I, my reference to him or my description of him will not be different from any other seen Nigerian. Because uh, I see him as a very notorious and satanic human being who has no feelings for humanity. When I read the tales of some of his victims, I almost wept. And I was very, very pained seeing the family, I mean the father and the wife, come out yeah. to plead that he should be forgiven. This is a man who pick up people with his gang, who pick up people at gunpoint and keep them against their consent for weeks or months demanding ransom which he will eventually receive what's the difference mm. between his offense and that of a boko haram member who we've now been told he's now a repentant uh, a boko haram member so he deserves some amnesty he deserves to be pardoned tell me the difference please well the difference between him and a boko haram member is that a boko haram member who is going to be pardoned or who is you know about to be pardoned is that maybe the Boko Haram member was, you know, indoctrinated by a, a group to join that act of criminality, and the state has felt that uh, the there's time for debriefing such people from the mindset they have. You, of course, you realize that some young girls, uh, as young as 12, 10 years old, are strapped with bombs to go and detonate in a public space, and uh, you, you don't expect that such persons will have uh, control of their senses, maybe because of their age. So that you're saying it's a failure of the state. It's a, a failure, failure of the, of the state. State. Yes, it's a failure uh, of the state. Now, in, in reading up the story of Evans, yeah. uh, according to him, his father disowned him when he was a young man at the age of four or something like that, and, you know, sent away his mother. And, well, that's a totally different uh, ball game that we can't even begin to uh, look at now. But look at the systems put in place to check such criminality. You have the BVN in the bank system, immigration. Uh, I mean, th this gentleman was uh, an international uh, criminal, and he went through immigration everywhere, whether you're talking about Ghana, South Africa, and the rest of them. Uh, talk about police, talk about the telcos. We gather that he actually had up to 120 something sim cards so i mean look at the whole system in the first place that made him get away with this for up to seven years i think what we want him must also not run away from is mm -hmm. that evans is a product of a failed family and you know that is you know applicable to most of us mm -hmm. because i tell people i i always give this sermon when people put all the attention on their female children i ask them what oh, about the boys that's why you see young boys, you know, having the mindset of committing rape. We tend to put all the pressure. It's only the female child that you send into the kitchen to cook, that you send to the market, while the boy will sit at home watching television, doing, going out with friends. Mm -hmm. So you allow the boy to become loose, and later the young man becomes a terror to society when he grows up. But also, when you look at how Evans has been able to you know, mean they are through the system. Mm. In the last seven years, it tells you very well clearly that, you know, the system, you know, is not foolproof, it's not working because you want to expect that somebody who has a telephone number mm. with which he makes contact with his uh, victim's family and for seven years he was unable to be uh, arrested until now, it tells you clearly that even the telephone, even the... the, the the phone registration, the SIM registration system mm -hmm. still, has a, it still has a lot of shortcomings oh, because yeah. we wonder regularly how come people are arrested, people are kidnapped, and ransom is paid. Yeah. 
So okay. it tells you clearly that the system, you know, has a lot but of challenges. Nelson, to when we'll come back, you'll tell us more about that, why, mm. how people can get pre-registered SIM even in this Nigeria of today. Uh, Nelson Ekujimi is our guest this morning, and we're looking at uh, the story of Evans, Chukudumeme uh, Omwamadike, the uh, kingpin, billionaire uh, kidnapper, as a matter of fact, that was arrested uh, last week. Uh, he's been out there in social media. A lot of people have been reacting to... And singing like a canary yes, right, right uh, now. Absolutely. Uh, so we're trying to make sense of what may have uh, led to this big gun, this Evans going into kidnapping, and of course how the system may have uh, colluded in you know, bringing Even about uh, such... Uh, and. Obviously, there are so many evidences around us. Definitely, definitely. And you know, the, the most interesting part of it was that when he was arrested mm. and um, the father came out and said uh, Evans' uh, uh, life of criminality was aided by the mother's irresponsibility that, mm. you know, the mother didn't play. And I was like, oh my God, here we go again. Mm. Buck passing. Mm. So you, the father, you were, you were a saint. And the, the boy grew up under your roof. You were the one that gave birth to him. And the boy became a criminal. Now he has become a criminal. Is the property or is the handiwork of the mother? <laughs> if the guy had become a senator or maybe a governor, oh, the boy came oh, out. Mr. President. He, I was, you know, he came from under that, my tutelage. I made very sure he was always with you. You know, mm. that's what we do. Mm. So what it has shown clearly is that one, the family has failed. And the earlier we all address this problem, the society will continue to suffer. You said the society will train the child. Even before the society trains the child, the society would have suffered incalculable losses. Mm. The issue of Evans that we are talking about, only God knows how many people must have died in his custody. Yeah, you true. remember just this morning or yesterday, there was this news about uh, a party shifting who was kidnapped in Undo, Chieftain, yeah, in and he was discovered dead. dead. You know, So it tells you clearly that the system is not working. I wonder several, we've written several letters that the NCC, is not doing its job. Mm -hmm. The telcos, how can somebody be using a telephone line and you cannot track that uh, line where the call is coming from? Who, the, who is the registered yes. uh, owner of that SIM? Mm -hmm. Because the way it is, it is very, very possible under our system. I've seen a case where somebody will call you with true color and another name will be reflecting. It mm -hmm. tells you clearly that the system is still very porous. That is why it allows for these criminals you know, to go on the rampage. Mm. Okay. Should we stay a bit more on the, on, on the family? People are saying that he confessed that his wife is also involved, which I doubt. But if, if that's mm. the truth, should the wife, and some are even saying even the children, should be implicated in this matter? No, the oh, children that's... shouldn't be implicated. But the, it's unfortunate that if I were in position of authority, the wife should also be picked up. And I think this is a wake-up call to a woman. Well, according to the wife, she didn't have any clue as he to what said, the man he was said, doing. She said and he was into haulage yeah. and all of that. And somehow he found a way of uh, disciplining the family and putting them on the straight line with prayers and all kinds of things. I mean, three ahead. Now, when you're married <laughs> to such a man uh, that keeps such a secret from you for so long, how are you able to... What can a wife do in that kind of situation? That is very, very responsible of that woman. Mm. I say it with all sense of uh, responsibility. For you to be married to a man and you don't know his means of livelihood, hmm. it shows clearly that all you are interested in is yourself. You are not concerned about the family. Because if you are concerned about the family, you should be asking, my dear, what job are you in? Even before you even got married to him, you should be able to know his. And if along the line, you find out that you cannot uh, understand what your husband is doing for a living, hmm. but the, uh, the man is coming up with money, you see him spending money, he has flown hmm. you from. Nigeria what if he has Sasa? like a studio office, a front, mm -hmm. a haulage office, for instance, to, to okay, this is what I do, and she will take take the woman there. This is what this is where I work. At least how would how mm -hmm. would the woman now know or decipher that okay, this is just a studio office? But the wife also confessed that the husband told her mm -hmm. that he was into drug trafficking. She mm -hmm. said so, and the, when the wife came out at first, she said she didn't know what the husband was doing. Later, the, the husband said, towards the tail end, before I was arrested, I told my wife, I, was in, I have stopped the drug business 
because the wife pressurized him to stop the drug business. Because it was dangerous. That, that was dangerous, mm. that he, should, he now took to kidnapping. So it is not that the wife mm. didn't know. It was just that the wife was behaving like the normal human being. The selfish attitude. You want to spend money, you don't want to know how the money came about. Ah, we have tried as much as possible to wax philosophical on this. Now, it took the, the uh, intervention of the IG's uh, intelligence response team Before to we actually... Before we go into all yeah, that, we'll yeah. bring Let, Koladele in, Koladele of course, in. Uh, you know, uh, for this arrest to happen. I wonder what that says, but let's hear from uh, the people. Uh, for Ladele, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Good morning. Do you have I'm a pseudo name? No, I don't. Okay. <laughs> I, I have to figure one out. <laughs> but um, a lot of reactions, so yeah. do brace yourselves. There's oh. going to be a lot to read. Okay. Reno Mokri says, is it right to arrest and parade Evans, the kidnapper, and refuse to arrest and parade all those who have kidnapped Nigeria's money since 1960? We're oh, coming back to that. <laughs> Oluwatush says he doesn't even look forgivable, but why is Evans' issue more important than any case we've heard previously? Balan Oshudi says, at um, Nigerian police, do your investigation silently. Enough of, a, of the broadcast while we await him in court. People have talked about this. Why are you publicly you know, updating us? Should you be updating us? And do people want to know? Big questions there. Efe Oshudi says, the world is watching. We do not want to hear that he escaped like vampire. Kara says, even after confessing to kidnap, Evans still has a support base in Nigeria. Don't be poor. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> April 27 says, in Nigeria, we can use anything for adverts. Expect this soon. Buy Evans paracetamol. We'll kidnap your headache away. <laughs> Azim Oguntala oh, says, man. immorality is now a cause for celebration in Nigeria. As I see people campaigning to hashtag free Evans, this country, wick me, oh, I beg, hashtag Jill Evans. And that mm -hmm. was another hashtag that we started to see, free yeah. Evans. And everyone's wondering, are people now supporting Evans? What's going on there? Yeah. But later, people started saying other things about this, and you'll find out in a minute. Okay? Justin Drew Dollar says, if hashtag free Evans is not about Johnny Evans, mm -hmm. who failed to move to us now, then whoever supports this trend should be arrested. Y'all can't spoil Nigeria. Musa Joseph says, hashtag free Evans, to forgive the kidnapper is up to God, but to send Evans to see God is our duty as a law in Nigeria. <laughs> A competent, yeah, this is yeah. the last one, and he says, hashtag, this free Evans thingy must be a joke. I do not want to believe it. I guess it's a mere sarcasm commonly associated with Nigerians. So people started to say, maybe it was sarcastic. And that's exactly how, <laughs> you know, my view towards it really. Yeah, that maybe it was, it's you know, it was, to, yeah, it was to I play upon it. it. Yeah. Too, far too far, because uh, this has to do with human lives. Mm. It means you don't have respect for the sensibilities of Nigerians, because this is something we should all be ashamed of. Yeah. That is a man who has a family who can afford to buy a house in Magudu and was living in such opulence. It tells you clearly that even the society itself is guilty. You took it right out of my mouth mm. because I was going to say, look, beyond blaming the police, how about the society, the society that has guilty. allowed this to go on? I'll you know, tell you, I'll give so you an example. When I was growing up, there was a man who was living opposite, directly opposite my house. And every morning, people realize that this man was always at home. Mm -hmm. In the night, he's nowhere to be found. Then, this day, they went and reported him to the police. Lo and behold, the police came and arrested the man and searched his house and discovered a gun and realized that the guy was an arm robber. That is how sin society operates, that you should keep watch over one another. Mm -hmm. you, it, is, it is not enough or it is unnatural for you to be able to keep watching. Nelson, over. we are wrapping up on this section now, but just quickly, just chipping on this, the issue of the police, uh, uh, the media yes, persecution that you, is Mr. going Amin. on. And uh, some of them, I even saw one of the officers who was promoted uh, posing with, the, uh, with Evans and some other gang member to take picture, and it was all over the social media. What does that say about What does that say? So let, let me, so, so let me put it into, because a lot of people are talking about this online. Yeah. So the question is, should the police, sh should they publicly, you know, let us know what they're doing? Should they publicly parade their investigation or should they do it silently and keep it out of our faces but or do people have a right to know what's going the on the people have a right to know they, and also the media has a responsibility to report okay. because this is a society in which trust has taken flight before you know it now you know information rumors is spreading oh he could be released exactly you know they could escaped. say he, he escaped you know mm. so it is very very important for the police to continue with this investigation and also 
in conducting its investigation, the police don't have a right to stop the press from reporting because the people have to be informed that, look, this is somebody that has caused a lot of havoc to the society. And this is the way to go, to serve as a lesson to other events mm -hmm. who are still at large. It, 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 it leaves a lot of uh, soul searching right. for everyone <laughs> involved, everyone observing this. Uh, well, according to Evans, kidnapping does not pay. And crime does not pay. No crime way. Does not pay. Crime does not he pay. says he wants to at die least he's now. telling. And, and it's when he get his, caught. He even told us that with all the money he had, he yeah. never had the opportunity of enjoying. To enjoy it. it. So you can never we enjoy. We got a girl, of Nelson, Jimmy. <laughs> Many thanks we'll for coming on TVC Breakfast <laughs> this morning. We appreciate your thoughts and Thank contributions. You, and yeah. for the delay. Put me out. Thank you. Now you see the name now.